Well, it looks like the uh, attendee uh, initial launch has uh, settled down a little bit. So again, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Bjorns Reloff. Uh, I'm joined by uh, Christy Perez and Bill Black. And uh, we are happy to uh, be here with you today and, and talk about something that's near and dear to our hearts um, and hopefully yours as well. That's why you're here, uh, which is uh, <laughs> managing your projects like a like a pro, um, and also to uh, and figure out this analogy about uh, a three-legged donkey um, and how it relates to a racehorse. Um, I'm pretty sure I know which one I've felt like at certain times, and uh, there are times when uh, I've felt like a racehorse, but uh, those are those are uh, good times when when I can get there. Um, you know, Bill, uh, let me introduce those, those guys real quick. Bill uh, has been around the industry for many, many years, uh, and Christy as well. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how long I've been around software, but it's been quite some time. Um, and, and you know, there are some certain parts of my body that can, can tell you uh, that I've been around a while. So, um, but I do, I do want to say that if you want to find any more information about us, happy to talk offline or look us up on LinkedIn. Um, not going to spend a lot of time on, on background. We only have a few minutes today, and this is surely not intended to answer every single question on the face of the earth about projects, um, but it is supposed to be a conversation about projects and how our collective experience uh, around the industry and, and also um, specifically Cognition 360, uh, how it can help you in managing your projects and, and managing them like a pro. Um, so uh, what's Cognition's purpose? Um, Christy, why don't you, you know, jump in here a little bit and less, less talking on my part, but you know, why don't you cover off these, these quick bullet points here just to give everybody an update. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Bjorn. Uh, so again, I'm Christy Perez. I'm the Partner Success Manager here at Cognition 360. Um, and with Cognition 360, we are analytical reporting platform for ConnectWise. So uh, it's really, um, you know, getting the data that you need at your fingertips, um, figuring out how to quit measuring on muscle and feel. Uh, we basically take all your data, put it into a data warehouse, and then we put that over into your Power BI tenant. Uh, we're up to about 170 different CAN reports um, out of the gate, mainly just to give you the metrics that you need, uh, figure out when to hire, um, client-facing reporting, lots of lots of different reports um, that Cognition has, including those project reports that we're going to be touching on today. Awesome. Um, so a couple of problems that we solve, um, getting you the information that you need quickly uh, within minutes, creating dashboards uh, to get that information emailed out to you on a daily, weekly basis, um, and, and really just getting you those metrics that you need to run your business and getting them quickly using the data out of ConnectWise that sometimes is a little hard uh, to get into a report format. Yeah, Bill, so why don't you talk a little bit about focus so people understand a little okay. bit about your background um, and how this relates to what we're talking about today. Okay, thank you, Warren. Um, so Focus Planet was started uh, about 10 years ago to solve the problem of uh, not having time to build out your ConnectWise. So we essentially uh, are a team of experts that get in there and do the work, do the hands-on work that it takes to get ConnectWise managed up and running and operating the way it's supposed to for your business. Yeah, and that, and that touches on uh, one of the points that we talked about ahead of this uh, in prepare, preparation, which is is the fundamentals, right? Um, and, and, and I'm a huge fundamentals person in, in a lot of aspects of my life, uh, including parenting <laughs> and including staying in shape. And, and really it's the fundamentals and also the consistency around those fundamentals. Uh, it all starts with, you know, a piece of software like ConnectWise is, is getting the configuration correct so that the data can be captured on a consistent basis. Otherwise, tools like Cognition 360 are not going to be as effective, right? So, yeah, uh, if you are having trouble setting up ConnectWise uh, and, and, and getting it configured so that it is capturing the data uh, to help you make decisions, you know, that's, that's absolutely something that Focus can help you with. 
Um, and yeah, special offers abound today. So if, if you wanna do a free assessment, um, that's something Bill's offering for you guys that attended today. So congratulations, you have that option. Um, and cognition, um, if free onboarding. So this is, if you sign up by the end of, call to action guys, you know, the end of <laughs> September, uh, which is in a couple, I can't believe it's already end of September, but here we are. So uh, yeah, so we have some offers for you today as, as is this, as the typical on these types of things. So yeah, and, and, and let's shift into some conversation here around projects. Um, you know, we'll start with some, some basic ones. And if you have questions, specific questions about projects, please pop them in the chat. And if we don't get to your questions today, um, we will have um, Bill and Christy in the chat, um, but also uh, afterwards, if you wanna set up one-on-ones, we can certainly do that as well. So uh, we'll start with a little bit of a softball, right? Just to get the wheels turning on projects. Um, you know, I'll start with Bill, you know, what, when does a ticket, when does a, an opportunity, I'm gonna change the word ticket to opportunity. When does an opportunity, when you turn that over, when is it a project? And when is it a ticket? Right, that's a great question. So we found that if you ask five different companies that same question, you'll get five different answers. Uh, and it all depends on the size of your company and how you handle, um, you know, projects uh, and and you know smaller things. So uh, usually the general rule of thumb is, you know, if it's going to take eight hours or less, it, it might go into a ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, and and be just fine in a ticket with a series of tasks in that ticket to kind of keep you, uh, you know, your checklist of things to do. Uh, if it's going to be something that is, is going to involve um, like different phases where you need to keep track of what happens next with, uh, with different phases, different, uh, different things that are layered into the project, then it's obviously going to be a project. That'll also come into play if you're assigning different resources, you know, and you kind of have to keep a track on the different resources that are in your project. Absolutely. So multi-phase, multi-resource, multiple days. Uh, you know, I've heard over the years, sort of the the where we've landed a lot of times, just purely from a financial perspective or from a number of hours perspective, labor hours. If it's over eight hours, it needs to be managed in a project. That it doesn't mean that's a you know one rule settles everything and settles every discussion, but certainly give you some guidelines to go by. Yeah. Right. Christy, do you have any, any thoughts on, on that softball of a question? Uh, well, definitely everything Bill said um, uh, in regards to kind of laying out those guidelines of what is a project versus a service ticket, um, really documentation, you know, coming up with that internal process internally to say, this is what we consider a service ticket. This is what we consider a project. So everybody kind of understands that um, and is trained on it. And, and then you kind of call it, it's more of a consistency thing. So you know, of course, there's always going to be those one offs. But, you know, if it is, you know, if it's over eight hours, it's a project and, you know, it gives those guidelines if it's a if it affects this many people or uh, if it's going to span two days, um, anything like that, uh, that you can put into a process to kind of build out to say this is going to be considered project versus ticket. Um, and then, you know, also deciding, you know, how are we going to bill for this? Um, is it a um, actual versus a fixed fee um, and figuring out out like, okay, if it's a fixed fee ticket, how are we going to bill for that ticket? Is it going to be put onto the ticket? Uh, and of course, project, you know, the same way. So um, really, it's just building out the, the process behind it and having that consistency across the organization. Yeah, you said a bunch of words are consistency, right? Uh, I said that a little bit before consistency with fundamentals. I mean, GIGO comes in mind, an old acronym, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, and, and the reason why we're starting with this question is, you know, what we're what you get out of cognition in the project profitability is only possible if you have data in the project area of the system, right? So there, that, that is kind of goes without saying, but that's, uh, that's the softball. Um, here's a quick one. Uh, you know, Bill, I'll start with you. Techs, should they be scheduling their own projects or are you... Do you have a manager, project manager doing that? So as with, um, with a lot of things with ConnectWise, it, it, all, it always depends, right? It depends. Right. It depends on the size of your company and um, the resources available for 
project management or ticket management or whatever. So smaller companies, the, the techs will act as PMs and manage their own projects. So the key there would be to maintain visibility of both the tickets that you're working on and the projects, right? So in larger companies, uh, there might be a general project manager that kind of keeps an eye on all the different projects that are going on or someone that's focused solely on projects. So we've seen it across the board uh, with, with a lot of different companies. Yeah, and, and we've seen the attendance, um, the registrants, at least that I saw, there were, you know, we, we run the gamut on this, you know, so again, as very well said, it, it, it totally depends on the size of the organization and the roles that you have and, and the capacities you have. So in general, if you have the ability to have a dispatcher, and I would say that, um, you know, a, a dispatcher slash coordinator, right, person, that's sort of the first step uh, that I would say, as soon as you can offload that from your engineers, the better off you are so that they can focus on resolving and be most efficient with their time. You know, uh, engineers, throwing all engineers in one pot, they like to solve problems, right? Um, and they don't like to deal with the logistics as much. So um, I think I can be not, not, not hurt too badly for saying that out loud. Um, yeah, so uh, Christy, question on payments for projects. Um, what, what has been your history, you know, in the MSP industry is, is what do you recommend typically? Let's, I'm, I'm talking fixed fee. Let's just say you use a fixed fee project. That's use fixed fee. <laughs> fixed fee, yeah, use fixed yeah. fee is your first answer, right? But yeah, but it, let's say it's a $100,000, you know, uh, labor project just to keep you an easy number. Um, so yeah. $100,000 100, in services, and let's not talk about materials right now. What, what does that look like for you? What's the ideal for you? Um, well, ideal would uh, get get all payment up front um, <laughs> if you can, and then and then work off that from progress billing and ConnectWise to move it in your, in your accounting system right. over from balance sheet to P and L. That that's ideal, right? Uh, from yep. a cash yep. standpoint, and surprisingly, I've seen it work uh, successfully. So don't be scared from it uh, off of it if if it's something that you've been thinking about. Um, if you can't bill completely up front, then I recommend you know, at least billing by phase um, to where you're billing as phase starts, not on end. Um, um, always, you know, try to put yourself out there to say, this is what we're doing. Um, sometimes I see, you know, billing half up front, um, half on completion. Uh, that's the one that gets a little bit, um, I guess, tricky or scary, um, mainly because of that last 5% uh, that sometimes doesn't get completed or gets drawn out for about three months. So that one I, I kind of steer away from as much as possible. Um, but again, it's all about process and, and trying to, to build it out to be consistent. But um, whichever way you do it, um, you know, I really, uh, from a ConnectWise standpoint, if you can set your projects up to where you're billing off um, more of it like a down payment, and then you basically progress bill against um, that time weekly or monthly or however big the project is to make sure that you're capturing that revenue in the month that it's happening. Um, so, you know, down payment will go into your balance sheet and then at the end of the month or week or whenever you pull that, it's going to flow over back into your PL that way. Um, if you do it by just down payments and like half up front or half on completion, it's really gonna put some, some you know, kind of strange lines into that PL um, trend line that you're trying to, to, to avoid. You know, you really wanna see that line on your PL looking, you know, always going up, of course, um, but um, by doing it by down payment and then progress billing, that's the way that I, I definitely recommend doing it. And then, of course, working from a management standpoint um, off of those budget hours that you have set up in regards to hit those numbers, you know, and, and, uh, and having those budget hours set based on that amount that you're billing uh, to be able, from, from a project management standpoint, be able to track those budget, what's been worked on, what's been done. Right. Yeah. And, and that's kind of, we jumped down a little bit ahead here. And we'll, <laughs> Sorry why don't you go about ahead that. And pull that. No, that's fine. That's fine. I, that's a good segue. So, you know, we could, we could talk for the next three days, three weeks, three months about projects and project profitability. Right. But let's, let's take the, the, let's just hit the highlights today to the best of our ability. I know we all like to talk about details around projects and, and other things related to ConnectWise and running an MSP. Right. Um, but I think just that what's on the screen right now is the 
uh, AA view within Cognition 360 as a you know, Power BI front end. Um, and the, the horsepower, in my opinion, speaking of the horse analogy, I guess earlier, is, is the amount of work that Cognition has done uh, to interpret the database, right? Um, and, and so the database in ConnectWise um, from an ERD perspective is very interesting. Um, very challenging, and and so there have been staff members at Cognition that have really spent the time to uh, organize the data uh, as clean as it is, and and present it in such a way that it's useful, right? So, um, and you said something about budget, right? So, you know, budget is you're 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 forecasting the budget. This is how many hours we have, and this is what was sold. Um, you know, Bill, what, when, what, what's sort of the, uh, again, another softball, right? So, but what, da what data point do I need against that budget? Uh, what's the cost? What's the primary cost on your project? So your primary cost is usually always going to be labor, right? So uh, tracking that, that cost of labor, um, mm -hmm. you know, the time, not only just the labor of, you know, the technical labor, but also the administrative overhead. You know, That's a lot right. of people forget about the cost of administrative overhead, and it's huge, uh, especially when, you know, you don't have a consistent uh, process in place. So, right. right. So, yeah. Exactly. And, and so the value of, of anything that has budget hours and then the actual hours that we're looking at now, the, pro, you know, weekly dashboard. So if you're, you know, one of the things that we talked about in preparation, many, many things we talked about, right, is the cadence. Um, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of cadence, not that I'm the only one, but I believe in it. I was taught it, um, trying to pass it on to others. Uh, one of the cadences in your organization uh, is hopefully a, a minimum a weekly project meeting where you are going over your uh, projects that are open and, and any deferred revenue that you have associated with them and percent completion um, and, and making sure you're heading in the right direction. Are you heading towards a trend line where the project's going to go under based on percent completion and, and the actual hours used, or are we on track? It's it's like managed services, it's the same thing. Um, so I would say that, that um, again, this goes back to the fundamental comment, uh, and a lot of, of uh, service providers struggle with this, a lot of individuals struggle with this, is, you know, time, time, is until we figure out a way to automatically enter time in a consistent fashion, um, time entry and your time health in your organization is has a huge impact on being able to do project profitability and know where you stand on a weekly basis. So you can pivot when necessary and figure out where you're out of scope is potentially happening uh, and things like that. So I guess the the Here's a who question. Um, who is accountable for the budget, Christy? And and you know how do you how do you handle those out of scope um, situations? Well, I think part of that depends on if you have a project manager um, or not, or if you're running these projects from engineer. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of it will depend on size as to who is responsible for it. Um, I've seen some companies where the account manager is, is responsible for it. Um, but the, the most important thing is that somebody is responsible for it. Whoever is responsible for it is in that weekly project meeting uh, to be able to discuss that. Um, you know, uh, ideally, of course, would be that project management role. Um, I've seen that role kind of hybrid um, with, um, you know, if you're not large enough to have uh, PMs yet or even just one particular PM, um, that you have um, that hybrid role. Um, I've seen that role with, um, say, that this person's over product development for the company and they're also over project because they're the ones that are dealing with new product coming in. Um, and then they're the ones managing those uh, projects as well. Um, and and if it's if it if it's at the engineer level, um, it it needs to be very clearly defined to those engineers what that budget is, and not just the budget, but the more you can phase out those projects and put budgets on those particular phases, the better it is for you. But also just for you know for for future uh, building out of, of, mm -hmm. of scope, um, the you know you're you're going to constantly probably you know, use some of the same templates if you can set up those project types templates um, 
to where you can go back and look at other projects of the similar size or similar type or if it was an Azure migration. Okay, let's look at the last ones that we've had of a client that was a similar size. Where did we go over budget on this? Where did we go out of scope? But who did we have to go talk to um, in regards to that scope? And then if it if it is going out of scope, you know, if there is an account manager involved or a salesperson involved, I would definitely get them involved um, to, to handle that piece of it um, because they have that relationship. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it it needs to be, you know, depending on the size of the project, especially uh, the last thing you want to do is surprise a client. Uh, at the end and say, hey, we were, you know, 50 hours out of scope on this project. That's why you're getting this bill now. Um, the more that you can talk to them about it as the project is going on, the better you're going to be. Um, now, sometimes, you know, it, it might be the first time you've done a project on Azure or, or something. And so you know that you might lose a little bit of money because there's a training feature in there as well. Um, and, and making sure that the account manager is aware or the project manager is aware of that. Like, hey, we're, we're aware that this might go over, that they're not going to get, you know, completely stressed out because it's going over this new, you know, engineers working on this. Um, it, it, but I, it, it really and truly, it just needs to be consistent that someone is tracking it and it's looked at from a weekly basis uh, and that you have a good report to be able to pull it up. Um, this weekly dashboard that we're showing here is probably one of my favorites for um, for meetings, for having a project meeting. You can quickly scroll through, pick project managers out, see the budget remaining, see if it's a fixed or actual. Um, so you know if it is a fixed fee, if you're getting close to hitting that, um, you're actually able to drill in, look at the phases, see what's left on it, um, look at all the tickets. Um, so just being able to have quick views and be able to talk about that, you know, all the different projects quickly in your meeting is going to be kind of crucial to make sure that these things stay on track as well. Yeah, I'm, while I ask Bill a question here, Chrissy, and in the background, maybe you can just show the drilling capabilities and not necessarily sure. just because we don't necessarily talk, but I want to see folks to see the mechanics yeah. of that. You know, I, a few years ago, I, you know, that was one of my ma massive complaints that I could only drill so far in yeah. a report and and uh that was super frustrating yeah um, i had a the, i had a partner the other day they said to me um a good day for me is when i'm looking at my projects and i don't have to actually go into connect wise so uh <laughs> it was <laughs> it was beautiful um i was like well hopefully i'm giving you a lot of those good days now but um yeah. and also okay. just um i threw into the chat i had somebody ask a question about the demo i've thrown that demo link in the chat um, I've also thrown in a couple of links to some YouTube videos um, on some project um, webinars that we've done for our partners that will go into more de detail as well on those project reports that we have available if anybody's interested. Yeah, and while we're looking at the chat or while I'm looking at the chat because you said that, um, uh, maybe somebody else is too, there is a link in there for the demo um where you could have and 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 explain that demo Christy one more time that's a one-on-one -on -one with with you or with someone else or what is that so the it, we're doing open demos right now about okay. once a month where we're just going through core reports um so it probably won't go into a whole lot of detail just on projects uh it's more going into all the core reports that we have from service to util um, finance customer reporting uh, they're about 30 minutes long, okay. uh, and it's just a quick way for you to see, okay, what are the reports that are out there? Perfect. Uh, so going back to the conversation here, Bill, um, as far as, you know, while, while Christy maybe shows off some drilling in the background again, um, the the end of a project, um, you know, is, is a time that typically gets overlooked in my experience, and, and that can be, and that's a very... It's, it's an opportunity for uh, serious growth in the relationship with the client, in my opinion. So what do you recommend, Bill, as far as, you know, running a project like Pro, as far as at the end of a project? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, great question. The, uh, you know, it's serious growth. The, the closure of a project uh, represents kind of the maturity of, of your, your company, right? So if you just close your project, uh, you, pick up your tools and walk out, you're done. That's one thing. But the reality is, is that, you know, you're, you're kind of sealing the deal with your new client or with the client based on how that project closure is. And also, 
from an internal perspective, you, you know, you kind of need to sit down with anybody that was involved in that project from the account manager all the way down and, you know, look at what went good, you look what, you know, what went well and look at what didn't go so well and look at ways that you can improve your project template for the next time you do something like this. So sure. that could be updating budget hours to a more realistic number. Uh, it could be, you know, assigning resources a little bit more effectively. So, it, you know, the project closure, you know, celebrate the closure if it's a big project, mm -hmm. you know, get a, get a pizza and some beer and celebrate it. But at the same time, you got it. You got to go in there and just kind of look through and see what went well, what didn't go well, what can be improved. Yeah, and, and and I would add to yeah, I agree with all everything you just said, Bill. You know, celebrate celebrate it internally. Uh, do do the that assessment internally and prepare for the external, right? So that comes first on in the project plan, right? It's the inter, in my mind, it's the internal meeting first. What do we want to go prepare for the external client meeting? When you go to the client meeting, you know, have something. You know, whether you're a paper person still or you're you're still you know you run on a on a, a device. That you present when you present the project closer to them you present it and then you there's a call to action right they have to choose whether you know um you know certain parts of the project go on on this level of service moving forward what's the ongoing service opportunity right after this right. and that that was probably talked about hopefully ahead of time in the in the project and so that shouldn't be a surprise at that point um, and so then, you know, it could be just a review that, hey, now here's what we do. Now we're moving you from our project team. It needs to be officially moved from your project team to your managed services team or your support team, right? You are no longer talking to your project. If you're that big and you have project engineers and you have managed services, it's critical to draw that line internally and externally as far as where the, the, they are now, who are, is their main point of contact at this point, right? Um, one of the things that we see often, and maybe you guys can talk to this, is that the the integrity of the data in, as related to projects, uh, you can get bloat or you can get underreporting, whichever you want to call it, um, whichever you fall into is if you're an existing client and you start emailing the help desk about a project. Well, that's not in, that's not on the help desk yet, right? Your, your, your support requests need to be going to the project team until that project closure. And that's that's a hard thing to manage, right? So you have to be disciplined around that. So, yeah, I mean, I think the other part of this uh, that we haven't talked about is uh, the healthy tension that exists between sales and, and, uh, and, and project teams in general. Um, maybe we can have a separate session on, on uh, you know, converting opportunities um, that are project opportunities to, and what that process looks like. Because I think uh, when a quote is won, what happens after that? I think that's where the ball really starts rolling down the hill correctly or not correctly from the very beginning. So uh, that's another piece that we we could potentially talk about. But let me uh, be cognizant of time. Um, and 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 are there any questions that are have come through the chat uh, that we've seen? Anybody? Yeah, we've got a couple of come through um, and um, Bill or Bjorn, could, you could probably answer this first one. So how to convert the service ticket to the project. I want to transfer the email correspondence history to the project rather than cut and paste it. Absolutely. Yeah. So in your service ticket uh, up towards the top where the icons are, there's the more drop down. So just click more and then convert to project ticket. Once it's converted to a project ticket, you'll be able to, in that dialog, you'll be able to choose what phase you want that uh, project ticket in. So uh, you can convert that. And also on a side note, if, uh, if you have a project ticket that really needs to be on the service board instead, mm -hmm. uh, it's labeled a little bit differently. Uh, you just open that project ticket and click more and it'll say project ticket options instead of option. yeah. Yeah. so yeah and 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 the thing i'll add to that bill is is uh when you're in a sitting a service ticket and you want to convert that service ticket for, to a project to begin with the that is correct me if i'm wrong bill you know connect wise details better than i do but but you have to have a project already created for that yeah. ticket to be converted to yeah. right that's so that's right. the difference. Yeah, that's point. the difference. Uh, when you're going from an opportunity, right, you have the choice to convert to a service ticket or a project. 
uh, or an agreement, but you know, you have a choice. So the, the, if you're sitting with a service ticket that you want to add to an existing project, fantastic. Do the more button and, and convert. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Christy, uh, what next, else? Uh, next one we have here is, do you have the ability to report on project milestone billing statuses for fixed fee projects? Each milestone on a fixed price project has a certain cost. Need to report on which milestones are billed, whether open or closed, and how much is remaining to be paid on projects and estimated payment timeline per milestone. Uh, so from a Cognition 360 reporting, uh, we do have uh, project phase billing. So you can see what part of this phase has been billed. I don't know if that's exactly what you're talking about in the milestone piece of it. Um, Basically, with Cognition 360 reporting, if it's a report that we haven't created yet and the data is in ConnectWise, how you're reporting it and you're consistently reporting it that way, we can build reports to report however you want that done. Mm -hmm. um, is this paid? Is it not paid? Has it been invoiced? Is it not invoiced? How much is left to be invoiced? Um, all of that can be set up and some of it already is. Um, I'm just not exactly sure from the milestone billing status that you're talking about if that's um, based on phase billing or, or what, but um, it, 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 if it's set up, if it has a data set, because we're gonna bring in everything, every data set that you have, um, and if it's consistently set up that way, then we can report on it. That yeah, I, up, go ahead, Bill, go ahead, Bill. Oh, Sorry. I, was gonna, I was just gonna say that brings up a really good point. You know, uh, project reporting and manage is uh, challenging at best. <laughs> If you know it's it's kind of like non-existent, so a tool like Cognition really brings out a lot of you know fantastic data and, and different views and things that you can see that you would otherwise not have any insight into at all with uh, ConnectWise. Yeah, it's it's that um, apparently uh, the three-legged donkey, right? Um, so I, I need to read I need to read up about that analogy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean it. it uh, I used to say that too. I mean it. The the I'll just echo what Christy said, and that's one of the things that um, one of my clients uh, or one of the our users I should say uh, way back in the day um, was that challenge of give me the data in my system the way I want to see it right and and that's been a consistent theme in the ConnectWise industry for you know 15 plus years um, and also I want to echo what Christy said. If it's in ConnectWise in a consistent fashion, Cognition either, is either already pulling that use case, already pulling that data for that use case, or at this point, adding, you know, a building a new report for you is, is uh, as long as you have a consistent process around it and the data is being entered, they can grab it and present it in the way you want it, which is, which is uh, or the way you want it, I should say. Um, yeah, any other questions, Christy? We do. Um, how often does the data pull refresh to ConnectWise uh, or from ConnectWise to Cognition? Also, can project data be entered and or edited directly in Cognition 360 or does that have to be done directly in ConnectWise? Um, so the data, um, everything is, is going into a data warehouse. We look for changes every two to three hours of the changes in your data. And then we do a full update overnight and the data is ready for you the next day. So with all of the Cognition 360 analytics reports, the 170 reports that I was talking about, that's always gonna be a day back in data. It's more looked at as more analytical reporting. We do have what's called Cognition Live. That is through API using the callbacks of ConnectWise, uh, but more on the service side um, than on the project side. Um, so from a project standpoint, more or less, it's going to be a day back in data. Um, not that Cognition Live can't do it. It's just that we don't have that uh, particular module built out yet. Um, so maybe you could help us with that. Um, the uh, next question, the data will have to be updated in ConnectWise. So the reporting for Cognition is really just reporting. It's it, You don't go into the um, Power BI reports and update there. It's just everything that's being pulled in from, from the ConnectWise data. Yeah, and, and I would say that that um, the other thing about 
cognition in general is um, there is no limit. I don't see any more questions. So I'm just going to, there is no limit as far as, I mean, obviously there's a limit to the worth of data historically, right? But from a trending uh, analysis perspective, uh, that, is, that was a massive request um, for a long time about, you know, reporting in the ConnectWise uh, in, uh, community and, and, and the other, I'm assuming this is for any business, right? How far back can I look at my data and the ability to analyze trends, um, analyze trends that are, uh, and, and especially comparing time period over time period. That's probably one of my favorite ways to look at data is to do comparisons and, and see, um, so that I give some context to what was happening and over a certain time and profitability, you know, overall from a, from a P&L perspective, you know, how am I doing on my projects? You know, what is my profitability trends over time um, across all projects? And then being able to slice it and dice it by if, you know, if, I'm, if I have multiple project managers, if there's a difference, project teams, if there's a difference, you know, it's, it's, um, it gets, you know, quite interesting when you have, um, you know, 150 to, to 300 employees as an MSP, that's quite large. And, and, but you have multiple departments, multiple locations, multiple teams, right? And they all have a performance um, goal, right? So we, uh, we just threw up a poll, um, you know, and if you can answer that, that'd be fantastic. Um, you know, uh, you should, two quick questions there. Um, 21 day uh, free, day, uh, risk free, here we go, I can spit it out, uh, trial of, of cognition uh, or some time with uh, Christy one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I've got a fill, poll coming for, for Bill too, so <laughs> I just, uh, so, so if you could not quickly technical fill, enough to figure out how to do them at the same time. So. Yeah, if you, if you could <laughs> fill it out real quick, um, that would be fantastic. Uh, leave that up for a second. I want to thank you all for attending today. I don't see any other questions. I think we had one more come in. Um, so a, a couple of different ones. Um, in regards to pricing, we are ConnectWise user-based uh, pricing. Um, I would just email me if you're interested in pricing. Let me know how many ConnectWise users that you have, and then I can get that pricing back over to you. And then I also had a question on onboarding. Um, so we do have um, a one-time onboarding fee, but like um, Bjorn said in the beginning, we do have a free onboarding offer up to $500 um, for um, everybody on this call as long as they're signed up before the end of the month. Uh, the way onboarding works is we basically onboard you like you're a regular client during a trial. So we also offer 21 day free trial. So it's risk free for you to try out cognition. And then during that trial, we will onboard you like you're a regular partner um, and kind of teach you how to use those reports that you need. Uh, so that's kind of how onboarding works. It's usually, uh, depending on your size, somewhere between two to three onboarding sessions with your team. Um, I like to get as many members of your team in it as possible, even departmentally, um, to, to get the uh, everybody, as many people as I can have in the report. So they're going and getting the data themselves and having, instead of having to come to somebody else to ask for it. Yeah, and I would add, add real quick to that is, is um, I've found it very useful when working with Cognition 360, that if you have a specific use case or scenario in your business that you're having trouble or you want to really focus on, that is what you bring to the table. It's very, there are so, there's so many reports and so much data in, in Cognition that if you try to, you know, eat the whole elephant at one time, you know what's going to happen then, right? So pick, pick, pick one bite, one, pick one pain point area in your business and uh and specifically a use case um that that is that is a uh, uh, one way i would say to get very quick um return on your investment in any sort of tool but especially in cognition 360. all right so then there's a poll for focus plan it if you guys could cram uh get your votes in real quick on that or poll answer these polls real quick free assessment um that bill's offering worth $995, <laughs> not, nine, not 999, 995. Um, we did have another question come in, Bjorn. Um, yeah. So C C360 pulls all data from ConnectWise to populate every project in C360. Um, 
Yes, that is correct. Uh, anything that you have in ConnectWise will get populated into the project reporting um, within Cognition 360. We we actually pull in from the audit data as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it's uh, it, you're able from a service side to get audit data information. You can actually see how long did this go from, you know, this was on this board, it moved to escalation. How long did it sit before being worked? How many tickets went from completed back to in progress? Um, lots of, of information. Pretty much, if it's a data set in ConnectWise, we have probably built a report on it in some form or fashion. Um, and most of our reports come out of MSBs or, or clients like you who ask for it. And if it's something that we haven't created yet, um, it's just making our product better to, to, um, to get that report gathered for you. Um, we do custom reporting as well. Um, if it's like custom just to you or it's your secret sauce and you don't want somebody else to know, we can scope out those custom projects. So a lot of times I see custom reporting uh, examples would be commission reporting. I almost mm -hmm. always see commission reporting being custom because everybody's doing those a little bit differently um, across the different organizations. So that would be a good example of what a custom commission, we would scope that out for you as well to say this is how much it's going to be, how many hours, and then those are uh, built out at $150 an hour. Uh, which is, is a bargain these days, in my opinion. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, the, the, the other thing I want to say before, plug for fundamentals one more time, one of my favorite reports besides project profitability in, in Cognition is, uh, and yes, we'll send out a recording of this apparently, right, Christy? You know, everybody yes. on that attended yeah. will have. A, a, so yes, thanks, Paula, for asking that. Um, a plug for uh, one of my favorite reports in Cognition 360, if you are going to ev uh, eval this and you are having a problem with time health or your time uh, adherence to your time entry policies, um, then there is a time That's health. That's never a problem, Bjorn. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I could just be making this up. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely check out um, check out the time health report uh, in, in cognition. Uh, it, it is fantastic. Um, all right. Anything else, Bill? Any final, final no. words of wisdom? All right. <laughs> Not really. We appreciate the uh, opportunity to meet with everybody today. It's been fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Christy, anything else? No, no, this is, I, I, I was just so excited to see how many people signed up. Uh, and Bjorn, great as always, love having you as a facilitator. Bill, great uh, having you on here as well. Love the partnership with uh, you and Focus Planet, Plan IT. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully, hey, we're going to be at ConnectWise IT Nation this year. So if you're going to be there, let us know. We will have a booth this year. We are doing a happy hour before the keynote. So um, even if you're not interested in cognition or focus plan, let us know that you're going to be there. We would love to have you at our happy hour as well. Awesome. All right, everybody. Hope you have a rest of the, what is it, terrific Tuesday today? A rest of your Tuesday is terrific. Uh, and I hope you learned some more. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.